Have a looming deadline for a major research project? Whether you're an undergrad writing your first paper or an established author with multiple publications, navigating the research ecosystem can be daunting. That's why the libraries at Columbia University have created From Books to Bytes, Navigating the Research Ecosystem, a set of online resources that define the research cycle, provide you with practical strategies, and guide you through the vast resources available to you at Columbia. The stages of the research cycle recommend that you plan, explore, manage, draft, preserve, and share your work. These stages are not necessarily linear, but they are all connected and all necessary to produce your best research work. Preserve and share your research. There are many ways to preserve and share your research. The Columbia University Libraries are here to help you understand the publishing process, make informed decisions about where to publish, and discover how to reach new audiences. Publishing is a process in which scholarship is reviewed, edited, and distributed so that academics can share their research with students, colleagues, and the wider public. The quality of academic publications is ensured through a process called peer review. You might be familiar with the type of peer review conducted in a classroom setting in which students swap papers to get suggestions for improvement. In the world of academic publishing, peer review is a similar practice. In the academic context, editors will send new articles and books to peer reviewers, experts in the author's field, so that they can vet the content and offer comments and edits to the author before publication. The resulting books and journals are typically produced by publishing houses and presses. In the world of digital publishing, in addition to e-journals and e-books, scholarship can come in the form of interactive blogs, websites, and other digital media. There isn't a formal peer review in place for these types of publications, so it's important to hold your own work to high standards. Ask your peers and professors to review your work before publishing in a non-traditional medium. We promise it'll make a big difference in the quality of your publication. Thanks to the World Wide Web, we're able to access many published materials online for free. The word we use for this in academic publishing is called open access. Open access work is much more likely to be read, cited, and used in teaching rather than work that's published behind paywalls, which are the fees and subscriptions that publishers and databases charge to read their work. Open access work encourages knowledge equity by providing access to information, regardless of whether an individual or an institution has the ability to purchase it. We encourage you to think proactively about what kind of access you want others to have to your published research. Choosing an open access publication or publisher may be an option in your field of study and can guarantee a similar level of high quality peer review. Whether you plan to publish in a subscription or open access journal, we encourage you to research the journal to understand their publishing policies, including copyright and what you can and cannot do with the work published. One of the challenges researchers face in a digital realm is the fact that websites and links are frequently broken. Therefore, access to online publications can be lost. That's why we encourage you to leverage your university's institutional repository, a digital archive of that academic community's work. Columbia's repository is called Academic Commons. It's a fully open access archive where we've committed to making research by Columbia students and faculty available long term. We're prepared to maintain stable links and adapt to changes in publishing formats that happen throughout the web. One of the ways we do this is by giving every object in Academic Commons a Digital Object Identifier, or DOI, a unique code that links to your work's online location. DOIs are used by publishers and institutions all over the world and can be used in citations and portfolios to guide people to your research. While not all students are eligible to deposit to Academic Commons, all faculty members, departments, and institutes are encouraged to submit their work using our online self-deposit. If you have a question about your eligibility or submitting a large amount of work, we're here to answer those questions at ac.columbia.edu. Finally, you can learn about other publishing opportunities and technologies through digital scholarship at Columbia Libraries. 
The Digital Scholarship Team implements the library's journal publishing program, which creates space for new publications in a diverse range of subject areas, provides education and mentorship so students can learn more about our journal publishing program at journals.library.columbia.edu, offers a variety of digital publishing workshops and resources, and provides support to start your own scholarly blog, create your own podcasts, and more through scalcom.columbia.edu. If you still have questions related to any form of publishing, email us at publishing at library.columbia.edu and we'll be happy to assist. We hope this video has offered some insight into the research cycle and how best to preserve and share your research. We encourage you to familiarize yourself with the other videos and resources in the From Books to Bytes series, as they all delve deeper into the resources available to you at the Columbia University Libraries. And remember, you can always consult with your subject librarian and visit our Ask a Librarian service on the Columbia Libraries website.